Hello and welcome to SAS Deciphers. This is Dr. Shivam Bhardwaj. Today we are going to discuss about biostatistics. So if I talk about the biostatistics things, so bio means living system and statistics means analysis or representation of the data. So today we will be studying data, then we will be studying variables and then the scales to measure the data. So when it comes to biostatistics, so it is very important for our NEET as well as AIMS exam. We'll obviously find two or three questions from this particular topic. So first of all, we'll be discussing about data. So what is data? Data is nothing, but it is just the raw collection of facts and figures. So we simply go somewhere, take some readings, that is data. How it's work, let me give you an example. Suppose we are going to study the blood pressure over an area, geographical area, and there's population is around 10 lakhs. So what we do, we simply take the uh, sample of around 10,000 or 20,000 people. Now, if we take the readings of 20,000 people and record them, now there should be some tool which can help us to represent that data as well as to analyze that data and as well as to just compare that data with another data. So it will be impossible to just uh, do 20,000 reading and compare each and everything with each and every data. So what we do, we represent this. So we find some tools or some uh, methods so that we can represent the data in more easy way so that we can compare and analyze that well. So uh, if we talk about the data, that can be qualitative as well as quantitative. Quantitative means simply measuring on a metric scale. Like if we talk about the uh, hemoglobin level, then it will be uh, this much. Uh, 8 to 12 to 14 or whatever. If we talk about the height, we talk about the blood pressure reading. So these are all quantitative data. While if we talk about the uh, qualitative, then we can uh, say like male and female in an area, uh, white and black or uh, uh, old, middle age and uh, younger age population. So these are the quant qualitative data. So data can be represented in quantitative presentation or qualitative presentation of data. So if we talk about the qualitative, oh sorry, quantitative, then we'll have histogram, then frequency polygon, frequency curve, uh, line chart graph, uh, cumulative frequency diagram, or uh, scatter or dot diagram. So these all are the tools for representing the quantitative data. Now for the qualitative data, uh, we have pi diagram, we are very familiar about the fiber diagram, then the bar diagram, pictogram, map diagram or spot map. So these are certain tools which are generally used for representing the data to make it simpler, to make it analyzable and to make it uh, more meaningful while we are doing this study. So methods of representing data one by one. So let's start with the histogram. So we'll have on the screen the histogram. If we talk about the histogram, so histogram is the graphical representation of the continuous quantitative data. I repeat, it is the graphical representation of continuous quantitative data. Yani ki the data can be uh, easily measured. So in this example, we have y-axis that is also known as coordinate and we have x-axis known as epsilon. So on the y-axis that is the coordinate side, we have frequencies or relative frequencies. While on the uh, abscissa, we have uh, serum cholesterol level or whatever the uh, quantitative data is there. So we have uh, certain bars. We can see certain graphical representation here. So these uh, graphical representations are having certain group intervals. So the interval between these two uh, is group interval and the maximum height of the frequency is represented here. This is the maximum height of the frequency. Now uh, we can see here there is no gap between two readings, right? There is no gap between these two readings. That's why it is known as histogram. Uh, there is a slight difference between histogram and uh, bar diagram. So that we will be discussing later. For now we should remember that it is a histogram. So uh, just concising it. It is a representation of continuous quantitative data. X-axis represents the uh, this data, quantitative data, and the Y-axis, that is the coordinate, represents the relative frequency. Now, coming to the next figure, that is frequency polygon. So here, in frequency polygon, it is nothing; just it is derived from the histogram. What we do, 
we simply take the midpoints of the highest height of the frequency midpoint of the height of the frequency is taken and we just join the group intervals now we get a area under this graph and that is known as frequency polygon so uh, to be more precise area diagram of frequency distribution developed over a histogram is known as frequency polygon so it is simply made by joining uh, class interval at height of frequencies now if these groups these uh, group intervals are high or class intervals are very less okay and there is lot of observation a huge amount of observation is there then we lose the angulation of this uh, polygon and since angulation is curved that's why it is known as frequency curve so it is also derived from the frequency polygon so it is simply the group interval is reduced and number of observations are increased loss of angles of the polygon leads to a curve known as frequency curve so the line diagram line chart or line graph so in line chart or line graph it's nothing it's simply a histogram and we take the midpoint of the high high frequency okay and we simply join the uh, these dots with a line so technically speaking it is uh, a frequency polygon presented uh, presenting variation over a line so its significance is simply it can represent the trends over a long period of time so if we want to know the trends over a period of time we simply use line chart or line graph now coming to the next that is cumulative frequency diagram it is very um, like uh, um, important and it is also known as ogive remember uh, cumulative frequency diagram is also known as ogive so what we do here we take cumulative frequency cumulative relative frequency on the y axis and the quantities on the x axis and what we do we use to cumulate or we use to keep on adding the frequencies uh, one by one so there are 2 3 4 segments and we are as we go ahead we move towards the positive side or towards the y positive side the we keep on uh, adding the cumulative frequencies so that's why it is known as adding on or cumulative frequency so scatter diagram, diagram. Uh, or scatter or dot diagram we also call it so here uh, it is used for uh, now we are we can see a lot of dots in this graph so these all are scattered so this type of diagram is generally used to find the correlation between two types of variables or two characteristics so what we do we simply uh, make two lines two straight lines along the dots and try to find the correlation between the two different uh, variables so here the y axis basically is a dependent variable so on y axis we'll be finding the dependent variable or the outcome variable so this is a scatter diagram and used for knowing the uh, correlation between two quantitative variables most important thing is quantitative variables so now coming to the qualitative variables the first one is the pie chart Uh, it is the most common thing. Uh, we have a circle with 360 degrees, and here we find the qualitative data, right? So we can find the percentage of. So maze. this is the picture diagram, or we call it picto diagram. So here it is the most simple and most common method of patient education. Here we simply represent a picture and uh, try to uh, impress the frequency of occurrence of events to common man. i'm again saying this is a standard line ki we try to impress the frequency of occurrence of events to common man using pictogram now here in this diagram we can in the pictogram we can simply see that there is one doctor uh, to patient ratio in ussr in singapore and in bangladesh so there is a huge difference between ussr and singapore and again huge difference between singapore and bangladesh now coming to the next one that is map diagram or spot map so here also we can see the lot of spots and these each is to, uh, each dot or each spot uh, marks one frequency so it is used for geographical distribution of certain things certain frequency or characteristics and that's all so this map diagram is only used for the geographical distribution representation of particular variable 
So this was all about the quantitative and qualitative variables uh, data and now we'll be uh, in the next video we'll be discussing about the variables and different scales of measurement in the biostatistics. Thank you.